Welcome to the Infinity Bros Podcast, the only podcast that is perfectly balanced as all things should be. Today, we have a wonderful show for you. Um, I am your host, Robbie Sauter. This is the first time I'm going to be hosting, uh, so bear with me. I'm going to do my best, but we have a special guest with us today as well, and he's going to introduce himself. He is the one, the only, Mark Jones. I'm, I didn't know I was going to be a special guest. I'm both a, a contributor to Infinity Bros and a special guest. I'm delighted. You're who the people really come to see. You're it. Oh, yes. You're the big yep. ticket. I, I'm i what everyone's here for. Yep, yep, that's me. I'm really here to, to rate you and, you know, score you so then I can bring it back to the bros and see if you're worthy down the line. That's that's why they hired me. That's... I wasn't aware of that. Is that more intimidating or scary? <laughs> Could you imagine if we did that? Like, we were, like, that, like, hardcore about it where, like, we had one of us rate and score us for hosting. I feel like that's what uh, some of our Patreon subscribers, I feel like that is their job as a Patreon subscriber is to rate how we do. Um, and then eventually we'll start killing off the weakest link. <laughs> We're going to kill a mop, not survivor it and like vote each other off. Yeah. Okay, I like that. It's not going to be like survivor where it's voted off. I feel like the Patreon subscribers will decide um, and they will just hunt that person down and uh, get rid of them. Oh, so they do all the dirty work. They do all the dirty work. So this is a really good plug. Uh, if you want to hear a wonderful 45 minutes um, discussion uh, 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 of, of, of love and happiness um, and just all out good, good humor, uh, subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, me and Mark had a very uh, nice, long um uh wide range of discussions um for about 40 something minutes on our patreon and uh if you subscribe i believe uh the first um i believe it's three dollars five dollars or eight dollars a month and you can subscribe and get exclusive content from the infinity bros <clears throat> all right and, and subscribing helps keep the lights on yeah you know, if you want cheap if you want me to feed my cheap. children yeah, if you want me to feel my feed my children, please subscribe. Please subscribe. <laughs> I just imagine now we have a Patreon ad where it's, you know, like those dog commercials. In the eyes of the angel. And yeah. It's not pictures of your kids. It's just you looking sad. Yeah. It's just me looking it, sad with all of my it, Funko Pops. Like, yes. Yep. <laughs> Robbie had to sell his Funko Pops. Yeah. Well, you, you, a dollar a day will help you feed Bobby's <laughs> children. <laughs> I'm all in on this. Like, I'm all in on that. Like, you can guilt people and do a lot of things. Anyways, you didn't hear us. You didn't come here to hear us talking about guilting you into a bunch of things. You came here to get our reviews, our reactions to <clears throat> to House of the Dragon Episode 1. The new series about Game of Thrones, but not about Game of Thrones if that makes any sense. The series that said, hey, you like dragons? You like Daenerys Targaryen? Here's dragons and a girl that looks a lot like Daenerys Targaryen. And that that's it. That's the show, essentially. <clears throat> that is what you came here to talk about. That is what we are going to talk about. We are going to review it, uh, spoil it, give our initial thoughts and reactions to it. So, Mark, I wanted to start this off with what – and maybe and maybe this is a two-part question. Maybe it's a two-rating question, um, which I suppose we should give our rating system right here. Here on the Infinity Bros podcast, everything is ranked from a zero to six-point scale. Zero meaning horrible and six meaning absolutely excellent. If all of the Infinity Bros rank something a six, it gets an infinity snap. I want to know what your rating of Game of Thrones, the original, is. Oh, man. <clears throat> See, that one's tough because, like, I loved... I loved, I loved it all the way until, like, the last two episodes. Okay. And, like, I haven't watched it in a bit. I can't remember if it was the last two episodes where it kind of went downhill or it was just the last episode where it's like, well, clearly they just, like, soft-tossed it in, the writers, to just get yeah. it over with. 
Um, and I know they even came out and kind of confirmed that's what they did. Uh, but overall, I you know I would still have to give this series a six out of six. I think it was um, it was fresh story, fresh storytelling, mm. great acting, and you know clearly HBO put money into that series to make it look good and just and then sound like you know they did a great job. So six out of six for the whole Game of Thrones series. Right, and I'm try- so I'm trying to find the names of the the men that were behind the last couple seasons of Game of Thrones. <laughs> They've I'm been blinking on them. and washed from the internet. I I am blinking on their names, and I they I, were so bad that the the Star Wars like sto- like show that they were gonna do got like taken away from them. That's what I wanted to. It was so it was a uh, David Benioff. And D.B. Weiss, creators of blockbuster Game of Thrones on HBO, are reportedly stepping away from their deal with Disney Luke's films for Star Wars movies so they can instead focus on their partnership with Netflix. So essentially, they they made an excuse saying, no, we're going to go to Netflix. Yeah, you're going to go to Netflix instead of doing Disney uh, Star Wars. I, I highly doubt that. Um, Kathleen Kennedy is like, nope, you're not going to do this. Anymore. Right. So I think uh, so I wanted to get your. So what did what did you say your rating was again? I'm sorry. Six out of six for six out of six. Okay, so I I think of Game of Thrones, and I think a lot of people think of Game of Thrones this way. Have you seen the picture on the internet where it's like it's three parts of a horse, and it's like all yeah. drawn like yeah. it's drawn really really well. It's drawn really really and well. It's like again. stick figure, and the third one's like a stick figure. That's how I feel about Game of Thrones. So well, I would give stick figure. The stick figure starts halfway through season seven in my opinion okay so the stick figure starts for me um i believe and i believe it's season seven it might it might all be season eight but i believe it's season seven when uh a lot of our our main protagonist gets stuck um in the middle of that ice lake and all the undead yeah they're Mm. they're all surrounding them that's when it starts going this this doesn't make sense like this. It, it, and and it's not that initial scene. It's then that a raven flies, gets to, I believe it's King's, is it King's Landing maybe that they get to? Or it's a very far away place. Like Westeros is not a small place. Flies all the way there. And then Daenerys Targaryen on her dragon flies all the way back. Uh-huh. And like these guys aren't dead. And we're supposed to assume that the, the raven got there. And enough time for her to get to there at that exact moment. Right. Yep. Yeah. And she got there at the exact moment that she needed to get there. Uh, that's and that's making baby. That's where in, in you that the argument could be made that in a movie that would probably be what happens in a series that was known for long drawn out, drawn out sequences, hour long episodes, um, really, really good storytelling. That's where I think the ball started to like roll downhill and things started to get faster and more and more rushed and more and more rushed. And and I and I wanted to get to this. <clears throat> George R. R. Martin came out uh, on August 11th saying that he was kept out of the loop um, on the last few seasons of Game of Thrones. So the original creator. Yeah. Because wasn't there a point where he wasn't even finished with that storyline? And that's right. Like and I don't, I don't think he's he finished. Kind of left out. Yeah. Yeah. He's he hasn't finished still, I believe. Because he went and wrote House of the Drag House of the Dragon um, and did some other Game of Thrones projects, but hasn't actually finished the Song of Fire and Ice. So then they just completely shut him out is what he's saying um, or is what he said to a to variety Variety.com with the story here. Um, and we'll put that in the show notes. I believe that's a thing that we do. Um, and said, he said he didn't know what was going on. He said, you have to ask Dan and David. Dan and David are the guys who are in charge of it. So the the writer that, you know, got them through those six seasons in, you know, incredible six seasons, had everyone on the edge of their seats every single Sunday night waiting for Game of Thrones, was then just cut out of season seven and eight, where I think most people would agree. That's when the show started to go downhill. 
Um, and because and, and maybe I'm maybe and some people probably remember this differently, but Game of Thrones took the world by storm. Everyone was watching Game of Thrones. And then when it ended, it was just like a oh, that's disappointing. And we all moved on instead of like 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 no one was that sad once it ended because the ending wasn't as incredible or as fulfilling as the entire story had been. So I just said it, it's wild that George R. R. Martin would be cut out of such a thing. And I just wanted to I wanted to touch on that um, really quick, because that's that's this little story that came out. Um, I think it was noteworthy. Um, and it does it does sound like George R. R. Martin is involved in House of the Dragon. So hopefully that would be a continued involvement. I wonder I would wonder with the Game of Thrones him not being involved. Was that the decision made by the studio? Being for the fact, like, well, you don't, we're not doing much off your book now, so do we really need you? But then also, like, even the writers be like, no, let's have George here, so he at least can guide us if he we kind of want whatever he's thinking, so it doesn't completely deviate from his own thoughts. So yeah, that'd be interesting if they have any, like, we ever hear their side of it, why he wasn't a part of it. Whose ever decision it was made the incorrect decision. Yeah, probably. Like, that is that is the maybe one of the biggest probably regret. Someone it has a very large regret over at HBO because of that decision. And they probably yeah, also, don't have a job. Yeah. And what I think is wild when you when you say like oh the like season 7 and and the 8 were rushed and they didn't even do a full 10 episodes each season i think that's what's wild too it's like so you rush because there wasn't money to do like three episodes in you know the season seven and another four episodes in season six or like what was the the deal why why were you rushed when netflix is out here i mean and this is after the fact but netflix is out here with stranger things going Oh yeah, you 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 really like this? You really like this world? Here's a two and a half hour episode. Here you go. Yeah, but now they're like bankrupt because of that, you know. So it is. What well, it is. you know, but but the fans <laughs> are happy. Yeah, that's that's all it that matters. I mean, I don't I don't I don't care that Netflix is bankrupt. I'm happy. I thought it was great. They did a great. They did good by their fans. I'll I'll stick to that. And go on. <laughs> <clears throat> like if they're bankrupt, that's that's their fault. Stop making terrible movies double down on your good products you know well only a few a handful of good movies can pay for the rest of those bad movies you just you know it's like spaghetti you gotta see what sticks when you're done right and then well and then they make a movie like a a day shift (laughs) that is yeah that that was entertaining to a certain point and then it was annoying in my opinion i gave i think i would like random off the spot i would give that movie a 3.5 out of 6 Have you seen that yet? Not yet. No. <clears throat> Day Shift. Uh, it features Jamie Fox. It is on Netflix. Um, it's it's subpar in my opinion. We'll just leave it at that. A lot of they tried. Uh, some things worked. Most of it didn't. All right. But you didn't come here for that. You came here for <laughs> more House of the Dragon. Well, let's get back to House of the Dragon. Let's reel it back in. House of the Dragon is the story of the House Targaryen set 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones. Its creators is Ryan J. Condal and George R. R. Martin. They are tagging him as one of the creators. So good for them. It cast, top cast here, and I'm just going to read this off as it goes. Patty Constantine playing King Viserys Targaryen, Emma Darcy, Princess Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra Targaryen, Matt Smith, Prince Damon Targaryen, Rice Ef- Ifans playing Otto Hightower, Reese Rice. Uh, we got Steve Toussaint, Lord Corlius Valerian, uh, Eve Best, Princess Renee's Valerian, Sonoya Mazuno playing Maseria, Fabian Franco playing Sir Criston Cole. Uh, I got to get to... Oh, here we are. Millie Alcock playing young Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen. Emily Carey, 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 playing Alicent Hightower Young. Um, So the young version of Alicent Hightower. Graham McTavish, Sir Howard Westerling, 
Um, and David Harovich is the Grand Maestro Milos. Uh, I don't think there's anyone else we need to get into quite yet. Um, <clears throat> it's always kind of hard to determine who's going to be important and who's going to die in a Game of Thrones uh, show. So I gave you a good amount of cast and crew there. I can't say there's a lot that I know off the top of my head. Matt Smith, I believe, uh, is probably the most well recognized, uh, well known out of that group of people. He was uh, he was the doctor, and then he, he was, was the Morbius. doctor, right, right. So Matt Smith is probably the most uh, well known in that group. Um, I'm sure there are others that people may know from from different things, but a pretty good uh, looks like a good cast. Uh, I think I think we're in for. Here, here's the thing. The same thing happened with Game of Thrones is that whoever they cast will eventually become stars because that's what happened with a bunch of the Game of Thrones guy, people. Um, IMBD gives the House of the Dragon episode one a nine out of ten, and it's is the fifth most popular show right now on IMDb coming out uh, a few days ago. I don't have the Rotten Tomatoes score on here, but and Max does love his Rotten Tomatoes score. But I'm not going to give it to him, and he's just going to have to deal with it. So, Mark, before we get into spoiling this, I would love to get your non-spoiler quick reaction and review um, and rating of this. I honestly couldn't see a flaw in it, and I know I'm a sucker for giving six out of sixes to stuff, but I thought the show was beautiful. So six out of six. I'm just going to go right for it. I don't care. Um, Wow. I loved how it opened with Drake, like a dragon, like, you know, right. Is that how it opened or did it open with like them going over, you know, it, it first opened with the prologue It opened with the prologue yep, yep. explaining what was happening and where we are in the timeline. And then it went to a dragon. Either way, we still got a dragon very fast. And that's what the fans wanted. We wanted a good dragon, good CGI. So clearly whoever they're paying to do the CGI aren't Marvel people right now that are being overworked. They are probably paying a fair wage for their CGI. And they probably can because uh, Warner Bros. Discovery had to lay off a bunch of people. So probably can pay those CGI guys or those IT or CGI artists more money. I really loved getting to know some of the new characters. I was totally lost that it was Matt Smith as Damon. I Mm -hmm. was less the dude from, you know, it's the doctor and it's the guy from Morbius who does that dance. It was my two first thoughts when I saw him. It's like, I like not a more perfect casting for Damon Targaryen. Yeah, I, I agree. And it was kind of interesting. Some of the de- like, you know, stuff he did <laughs> that <laughs> he leads the watch and kind of the inner workings and dynamics of people and already getting some important deaths right off the bat and kind of just slingshotting us into what's potentially going to happen in the show if you haven't read the books. So I, I'm very close um, to your rating. I would give it a 5.9. Um, and here's why I would give it a 5.9. I feel like Game of Thrones Episode 1 set such a high standard for, for starting a story that this didn't quite meet up to that expectation. When I think of Game of Thrones, that episode had had everyone. It had character development. It had motivations. Um, it, it right away you could almost pick who you were really interested in, and then it had it had it was very heavy as well. Um, and this this episode had a lot of that as well. I think Game of Thrones, the first episode of Game of Thrones, did that slightly better. And that's why I would give that a 6 out of 6, and I would give this a 5.9 out of 6. And what's wild with that is the first Game of Thrones episode was a true pilot where some of the designs of the characters changed by the second episode, where this show clearly was not a pilot. It wasn't made to then sell. HBO's like, we're making this, so... So I think that's that's what's that's what's you know really on point with your rating there, just to push that farther. Right, and that is is not a knock at all on this episode. It was a fantastic episode uh, to start a series. Everyone is talking about it. Like I always kind of gauge things 
um, based on is the radio talking about it? are the radio DJs talking about it? Um, because and it's a terrible gauge of like who's listening, but it's like you, you could also go by social media and whatnot. But if the radio DJs are talking about it, like then everyone's the, talking about it, yeah, everyone is talking about it kind of thing. Um, and the, everyone saw Game of Thrones and, and we were in a football meeting today or uh, this week on Monday um, and a few coaches were talking about it. Guys that I would not say are nerdy at all. Um, so they were talking about it. So if they're talking about it, I came home after that football practice. I was like, guys, we have to do, we have to do a review on game of Thrones. Like, and we're like, Oh, maybe we make it a Patreon. It's like, no, it's like, I hate to break it to you. Game of Thrones is a lot bigger than, than a she Hulk. I'm just going to, and it just proved it with what almost 10 million viewers the first night. Right. And, like I'm assuming that 10 million means like people watched it live. Is that what that number was? So like they watch it Sunday night. That many people watched it. You know, I I would assume that there's it's probably a window of time that people watched it with apps and everything. That that the apps have really changed things. I would assume it's like a 10 hour or 24 hour window that people have watched it. Oh maybe. I don't maybe. know. Like, I, I, the, I don't know how that app, works. In the app, you can watch it live. Right. So, yeah, I'm just curious how they gauge that. But, yeah, you're maybe it was the first 24 hours, which is still a lot of people. If 10 million were watching it all at once, imagine what the number would be in 24 hours. Like it yeah. had to be at like just a ridiculous amount. Well, of people And it was enough for watching this on Monday for me. Uh, the app crashed three times. I had to wait until Tuesday to try it again to watch the episode. I watched it a little later than start time. I watched it about half an hour after it started and we couldn't get the app to work for a good five, ten minutes. And when it was working, it was very laggy. There was a lot. So it was a little unfortunate for me um, mm-hmm. that we it, it was very there was some moments where it was very pixelated. And I think that's just the app just was not ready for that kind of usage. Um, but yeah, this is just great. So I want to give we're going to get into our spoiler uh, talk here. So we're going to put our spoiler bumper right here. This is Prepare Yourself at Infinity Bros. Prepare Yourself. Spoiler. Ah! Warning. All right, we are now on the spoiler side of the first episode of House of the Dragon. And Mark, I, I believe that so this, this episode starts um, where they have the chance uh, correct me if I'm wrong to name a woman as the, yep. as the queen, so but then decide it, it was, yeah, uh, the well, they had 14 people. They said like, put their name in the hat for to be the new ruler. And it came down to two Targaryens. At least that's what we are learned that what happened. And I forget the relations to the, that current King. Cause the King lost his two heirs and like a, a war or something. I think so it was it was Princess Ren- Renaeus Valerian, I believe, was oh, okay. was who they had the, had the strongest right to the throne. Oh, because she was the niece of the king, right? Something like that. Something like that. So she had the strongest right to the throne, but then it was given to Viserys Targaryen. So you instantly like, have yes. So you instantly have this Valerian and Targaryen conflict that we've seen from game of thrones um now obviously king viserius who becomes the king um and we find out later in the episode didn't really want to become king they kind of i i got um uh sean bean oh my gosh i'm gonna i'm blinking on his name in the show yeah i'm getting ned stark vibes from him where he doesn't want to be the king and maybe he's not the greatest king, but he's doing his best and he really, really relies on his council around him. And we start and, and later in the episode, we start to see like this council is is not cohesive. Yes, it's not cohesive. Like there's a lot of like obviously obvious bickering that must go on and like not trusting mm-hmm. each other. But yeah, my first thought when, you know, it selected that uh, um, the series is the king. And then I'm thinking like, oh, the other two people are just going to be like the enemies. But no, they have uh, uh, her husband, the the Valerian guy, 
is it Corliss? Carlos? Lord Corliss Valerian. We'll just go with Lord Corliss. He's, he's part Lord of the Valerian. Council, so I'm sure he's yep. part of the Navy. He's like the Navy guy. And he talks about like, hey, there's these pirates like attacking in this area. And they just like, yep. all laugh him off. And he's just like, so clearly those pirates and the crab eater guy that they talked about is going to be some form of antagonist to these people. Viserys Targaryen's council that he's using. Otto Hightower is the hand, uh, played by Reese. Ivan, Ivan's, he's been in other things. I'm looking at his face and he's, he has been in other things. He's the kicker in the replacements. That's, That's it. Gosh, this picture is 100% that. And know what? And I, when I found out who that was, it's like, he looks nothing. Like, I'm just like, the dude's old. Could not now, tell. Obviously. Right. Um, and he's also... I think he's in Little Nicky. He's one of Little Nicky's brothers. So that's oh part of like gosh. that's that's the timeline I go with him is Little Nicky Absolutely brilliant. and the replacements. So brilliant I, casting. I was I was more in when I found out that he that was him. As Otto Hot Terror. Uh, Lord Valerian is another one of the council. Uh I believe gosh, I don't here we go. Lionel Strong, I believe, is the other uh the the bald man in the council um and then i think the, the grand most Meister, right is the other guy and then the grand Meister, but i don't know if they're yeah so and then the most i think probably either the fan favorite uh go like after this episode or the the most questionable the most divisive character from this episode was prince damon targaryen Right. Uh, played by Matt Smith, who we talked about, who was the doctor, who didn't just – I didn't even pick up on that. Though. That was the doctor right away. Um, he played this role so well, uh, such a balancing act because the first thing we see him in is he's he's sitting on the chair. Uh, Renera Targaryen comes in, sees him sitting in the in the Iron Throne just with, with you know, they, they took the sword okay. thing and, right. like, do, went, do like, you feel bad like, swords, that th- that more was. swords. Yeah. It was, it was wild. It's like a Game of Thrones, yeah. Yeah, so he's sitting at the throne um, and then gives uh, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra, I think, Rhaenyra, I think I'm saying that right, Rhaenyra Targaryen, uh, that necklace. So you, so you instantly get, like, Oh, this guy, he, he cares for his niece. Like, oh, okay, okay. So this like guy... There is, some, there is some form of relationship that have come down the line. He might side with his niece because there was some bond that they have. But he might not side with other family members or other people that are aligned with the king. That's what I gathered from, from that opening part with them. We learned that Daemon Targaryen, uh, the prince, the brothers, or the, the king's brother is leading the night's watch which it and and it seems like he's one of the best night's watch commanders that they've ever had he has these men chanting his name um you know pounding their chests as he's walking through them he definitely has extreme leadership maybe militarily military leadership qualities um that has quite the following and then we find <clears throat> that he is going to be the commander of the gold cloaks in King's Landing. And we, he, so we find that out and they decided that the city essentially is filled with too much bad. And they go out and they, I, I forget the number, but they, they just start chopping people's hands off. Who are these? Cutting, what's that? Yeah, cutting hands off from thieves because they're they're basically going to these criminals and like their whole goal is to strike fear in in committing crimes because yep. like this is how they're going to punish you and you're not just going to be able to go back to King's Landing f- as a free person. Damon Targaryen has the armor that a twelve year old boy draws when he wants. <laughs> like, I want a dragon knight armor. It's like it's like yep. it's legit like Yu Gi Oh. Uh, armor that he's wearing it has like horns and stuff um he chops a guy's head off uh they kill a bunch of people there's a and then he comes back to chopped off dude gets his wiener chopped off he doesn't have that anymore yep that's that's on your that can be checked off your list of things you've seen on television yep doesn't have to worry about that anymore so that that all goes down and then he comes and he's now part of this council and an auto high tower uh right off the bat is not a fan. That's where we start to see 
we start to see what we we thought was a cohesive unit separate in this this king's council. Damon definitely brought a different yeah, Otto's a, a different vibe doing to his this best council. To undermine, I think, the king's inner circle. That's what we kind of start gathering at this point. And then they start questioning, are we making the right decision? As much as it may be tough to to assume, if you start killing people for doing bad things, other people are going to fall in line. And he, he says something to the effect of, if enough people are scared, they'll follow the rules kind of thing. Um, and, he, and I think, I believe, the, I believe uh, Viserys says something like, I can't lead. Like, will it like, is it going to work? How many people do you have to kill for this to work? And he just goes, we'll see. (laughs) Like, we'll see how many people have to, you know, be murdered in the streets uh, before people just kind of get in line. Um, So you get all that. You get all that scene. Uh, They're enjoying, you know, one of they're not enjoying, but they are. You kind of have this. You start to see that this this inner circle is not cohesive. They are not. Uh, all not not all is well in King's Landing, and the Targaryens maybe aren't as powerful as you thought, but they do have dragons. Um, we have a lot of stuff on Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra Targar- Targaryen, uh, who is basically, you, did you like Daenerys Targaryen? Here you go. <laughs> yep. Here's 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 the upgrade. So she already has a dragon. She flies in to this show on a dragon's back. So we know she's well she's well versed in uh, dragon riding. Big dragon rider. <laughs> so the well, main kind of we we got to know that when she's probably in battle and she's flying around this dragon, but she's not a novice to it. Look, I get it, you're lazy, and coffee from the grocery store is just as good as ordering from somewhere like Mini World's Tavern, right? Wrong! That's dumb, and you should feel so dumb for thinking that. Does your local grocery store donate a portion of their proceeds to charity? Actually, you know, if they do that, that is kind of awesome, but we guarantee that Mini World's Tavern does that! Besides, it's not like your grocery store provides an amazing monthly blend with added RPG-themed bonuses. That's a limited edition Mini World's Tavern exclusive, baby. They are the online coffee brand that's perfect for game night. Guys, I should know. Before every podcast and every time I go live on Twitch, I fill an entire bathtub full of great old one, and I do my best Lord Harkonnen impression. Guys, grab a bag for yourself right now. Go to www.miniworldstavern.com slash the infinity bros, all one word. And guess what? You're going to save yourself 10% at checkout. So the king's wife is pregnant. Uh, they decide that they are going to hold a, a tournament, uh, a jousting tournament, um, kind of in her honor because she's 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 due soon. They know for sure that the child is coming and Viserys Targaryen needs an heir because he only has Rhaenyra and they don't want a queen on the throne. They want a king. So so they so they're they're in preparation that he's going to have a son. They are having a Bickle tournament. Damon Targaryen's part of that tournament. Um, And and during that tournament, I, I thought it was interesting that they they had they made it a point to mention that none of the men fighting and none of the people watching have been involved in any wars. There have been no, there it's been a peacetime. So Viserys Targaryen is a peacetime king. So all of these, all of these men, essentially how, how it's portrayed are bloodthirsty and they are looking for reasons to fight. So they go through this jousting, Apparently in jousting, if you're if you get knocked off your horse and you're grumpy enough, you just get to try to kill the other guy. Um, So we get so that's how we get some of our that's how we get some of our Game of Thrones violence. And I think it worked really, really well here. Yeah. And showed the brutality of like that stuff actually really happening in medieval times. So like, you know, that's what would happen. And, you know, you get struck in the face with the sword or I forget the thing with like the ball. The, the the chain mail the, yeah, the like wow gonna, what is that thing called I don't know it's gonna rip, it's gonna hurt it's gonna rip flesh apart so yeah not good feeling things um and during so during this tournament uh we 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 get a whisper from the grand meister 
Uh, Viserys Targaryen goes away. His wife is in labor, or he announces that his wife is in labor, and then he goes and is with his wife. This, I think, was the... <clears throat> now we're getting into... We, we thought the, the the men killing each other was brutal. Now we're getting into the real the real meat and potatoes of the brutality of this episode. And that is Viserys Targaryen is given and an, basically an ultimatum. Uh, you got to think this is min- medieval times. They 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 have milk of the poppy and that's pretty much it um, for for pain purposes. And they have nothing to stop uh, the bleeding. Um, so she and they is don't have labor. the technology they probably do a cesarean, right? Either they 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 have no they don't know how to do a C section. Um, the maestro tells them of in far lands there is a procedure that can be done uh, to save the child, but the amount of blood loss will kill the queen. So Viserys is given the ultimatum: you can let them both die. Like like hundred percent. There's no chance either survives. You let them both die, yep. or we can. You get to make the decision that you're gonna, lack of a better term, cut your wife open and save your child, and your wife dies anyway. So so he so this king is now, and, and they've made a very good point to this. I think the storytelling was really well done. That they clearly made it that they are in love this is not a a this is not a oh i'm forced to be with this woman kind of thing and she's just she you know she's just there to carry my seed like they are actually in love this is actually a king and a queen who care for each other and and want the best for each other mark just how i think he had to make it go ahead what are you gonna say? i was just gonna say how did that how did that scene what were you feeling now as a new father? What were you feeling in that scene? Um, and how happy. do you I feel that affected maybe that everyone decision. watching? <laughs> I, I think it was, I think you're right. I, I do think we, as a viewer, you should have got that. It wasn't just like, oh, they're married because of royalty reasons. It definitely felt like they had some love connection. And it's, it looked like it was a tough decision for him to make. But obviously it's like, you know, he's going to, I mean, if you're probably given that, that, choice of like well you don't do nothing and they both die or you tr- do this route and you know probably one will live you'll you, that choice will have to be made i'm not i'm sure no one's going to make the choice where you just both die let them let both people die so i don't know that was rough um but yeah i think you know he he made the cho- i mean, might have been you could say he made it for selfish reasons but like both of them would have died if he didn't make the decision so i would argue that his wife probably would have agreed that that's the right decision to make. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong, it, but, but it, it did it makes... show how much power a King has there where he makes a decision. No one, no one like counteracts that they just go right to work. That's that's, I think that's what also showed brutality and like loss of humanity a little bit on that, like level of the, the time frame. It's kind of imitating the medieval times and how much, pull the king has like the king's word right. is just like yep we go do it no no questions asked and they didn't say anything to the wife they just start they start exactly s- yep. restraining her to cut her open um i th- and, and you know it, it's a brutal brutal scene i think if if you know thank goodness none of us will ever have to be in that scenario ever or i hope that no one ever has to be in that scenario but I it may, like at least to me it would make sense. It would make sense that you would if I can save one of them, I'm going to try to save one of them. Um, and his like I I would assume that a, a, that his wife wouldn't disagree if she was like if she was in his shoes. Like obviously no one no one wants to die, but I, I assume that she would probably be I okay. Think, with I think a lot of viewers would have wished there was some communication between them. Hmm. Versus him just jumping into it. But I think that just tells. That's why I think he goes a little bit to the, the selfishness, though, a little bit of him picking the child because he wants the heir without knowing the sex, though. That was another thing that's brought up. It's like they didn't know if it was going to be a boy or a girl. Yeah, he's got a 50 50 shot if it's going to be another girl or a boy. And like, but he, he has to take he has to take that chance because that's the pressure he's feeling from his supporters. Like he is feeling like I need 
a son. Otherwise, you know, the Valerians are going to take over or, or Damon or someone, Damon who, who they, yeah. or our, our auto high tower is going to take over kind of thing. And obviously who people in power want to stay in power and they want their families to stay in power. Um, but I, I agree. I think, I think, uh, I think a lot of people might be upset that you, why didn't, why didn't he just tell her? Cause instead he goes, they're going to take the baby out. That's all he says. They're going to take the baby out now. And then and he just goes, it's okay. It's joined okay. down and then like clear fear on her face goes on. And then, then they get the baby out and the grand master's holding it and it's crying. Like it's, it's, know, it's crying. Alive. It's alive. Crying. He says but it's then, a boy uh, and they're, they're thrilled. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a quick moment of joy. And, and game of Thrones uh, for, for all the things that they've struggled with game of Thrones has timing down to a science. They give you this little glimpse of joy and then in the very next scene, we 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 see we see the uh, his wife is is bandaged up and is on the the wood pile, and then it pans down, and then you also see the child. Because yeah, we we get the Grand Maester's like face, like you know, looking at the baby, like we're supposed to indicate, like is the baby okay? And then yeah, then we go to that. Which then right. this is my this is my little into the weeds, knowing from Game of Thrones. And knowing what oh, else we're going into the season, weeks. yeah. Oh. Are we a hundred percent sure that child's dead and not somewhere else? And it's all a no. plan. It's all it's all a Game of Thrones for Otto Hightower to infiltrate and get his someone on his side in succession for the throne. Now that is an interesting point because you're you're right. There is a scene in between there where all the other members start whispering to each other and they all leave the, the jousting they all leave the tournament. So there, that is a very interesting point. I didn't even, I, you know, I, that was such a small moment that when I watched it, I was like, what's going on there. And then everything else happens and you just kind of forget about it. But the, I think, I think you're on to something. I don't, I don't know. It, 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 they might have if Otto High, if Otto Hightower had them had the child there, murdered. It's Game of Thrones. Maybe? There's got to be a there's got to be a swerve. There's got to be something that's found out that clearly someone in his like you know if it's you know if it's him or someone else that is working for Otto Hightower, like you know killed the it's something something's got to happen. Like they're you know I'd be very surprised if none of them's in on trying to overthrow the king. Maybe it maybe the storyline is too simple, but it makes a lot of sense for it to be Otto Hightower because Otto is also the one who wants Damon Targaryen gone. Well, right? then there's also a, the scene where he sends his daughter to like go to the chamber of the king after his wife died because I'm yeah, sure let, let's let's is- let's wait one sec before we get there. That I, I want to get I'm going to get to that here quickly, but I want to hit on I want to hit on the the bur- the burial of well okay, i guess yeah, not yeah. the crema- the cremation i suppose the funeral ceremony the, the funeral ceremony so so we're at this funeral we get the, we get the pan down that we see that the baby has they're, also died yeah they're on a funeral pyre right um and, and lord viserys can't say the word and damon uh gets goes behind rhaenyra and goes he's waiting for you because he can't he can't muster up the the courage or 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 he just he can't let go and i think that speaks to how much how in love i think i think it's because of how in love he was and also him realizing that's my heir and now i now i've lost my heir i've lost my wife kind of thing and then so he's waiting for for rhaenyra to say the words because he can't say it so and so they have to paint the picture, they have the dragon. I, I bling on the dragon's name, but he's on top of the hill and he's just waiting for Rhaenyra to give the signal to, to light them on fire, to cremate the 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 bodies. Um, and I thought I, I thought that scene w- was was important. It, w- it was quick. There's lots of quick things that happen in episode one, but I thought that scene was important because. She, Viserys didn't say that to Rhaenyra. Damon, ha, Damon and Viserys have this connection that he knew 
that Damon, that, that Viserys couldn't say it and that Rhaenyra had to say it. And Damon gave her that edge. And I think that speaks to the bigger picture that they are extremely close as brothers, even though they are very different. Yeah. So then so then we get to yeah, then we get to your then we get to the scene that you were talking about where Otto Hightower sends his daughter uh, the night of Viserys's the night that he has to like cremate his wife and child and sends his daughter to his like the daughter is also what is what is she to Rhaenyra again like she's like almost like a like a handmaid like she's not like a maiden because she's you know of highborn but she's right. like like we get scenes where they're like going over books and like trying to teach Rhaenyra stuff and then we get a little bit like Rhaenyra doesn't care but obviously she knows all this stuff so like she's very smart. She wants to be a fighter, Rhaenyra. So yes, just a little backstory on that. So as she, yeah, as she is. Sorry, let me get let me get her name here. I believe it's Alcent. Alcent. I believe I'm saying that right. Yeah, uh, Alicent. Alicent Hightower, um, played by Emily Carey in this episode. Um, I also think it's interesting that they say it says young here. It says young for a lot of these. So uh, so maybe in episode two or. Further along in the line, these all of these uh, characters are going to get older fast. That's that's I think an interesting, interesting IMDb cast yeah. thing to point out. Um, but yeah, so so Otto is clearly playing a Game of Thrones. I think. Um, so so she goes up there. She does her and the, yeah, they're like best friends. I think there is they they call it something in Game of Thrones and Westeros. I'm blanking on the name as well but they they do have a they they have a thing that they call it uh for when there's a woman that is like they're always connected and they're teaching each other um so you get that scene and then then you get uh matt smith uh, prince damon targaryen in a whorehouse essentially and and they are they are drinking, having a merry time, and Damon's men seem to believe that now he is go he is next in line. He is he has the best right to the throne. Um, but you see you see Damon sitting there silently, not saying anything until he's asked to speak. Um, and we come to find out uh, through. Uh, who, who, of course, Otto Hightower and his his minions, that Damon Targaryen said the line that he he toasted he toasted to the king for a day. And and re- refresh me, did he actually say that? Do we see him say that? I or, did not or, remember seeing him say that. So I, I think thought. yeah. Okay, because I was I was trying to remember that when you were talking about that, and yeah. Says so the king for the day, referring to um, the um, Viserys' son who died. So, so Mark, I want to ask here: Do what do you think Damon's intentions are? I don't know, because like, yeah, we get initially that he's like, like, is he bloodthirsty, or does he think this is like, you know, this is the way he would just rule? It would he be a bad king? Like, I just. I don't like I'm so I'm so invested in him as a character, especially how he's been portrayed by Matt Smith, that like I I kind of feel like we're supposed to get set up that he's supposed to be a bad guy. But I think it's going to come full circle and he's going to be a good guy. And, you know, watch me, you know, eat my words down the line. He's like murdering a bunch of people. But um, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see the kind of progression this the character has for Damon. Yeah, I, I I'm kind of right there with you, I think. They have they've balanced the good and the bad with him during this episode so well that I think there's some people that think he's he's the villain. He's the bad guy. Then I think there's some people that think he's the redemption character. He's the he's the he kind of has like he's just the Deadpool for this show. He's he's really not a good or bad guy. Yeah, he's just like he'll do the right thing type of situation. He's John. He's John Snow. People kind of like him, but he's eventually going to get on people's nerves. Yeah, I, I mean that that could maybe maybe he's John Snow. Maybe he's John Snow. But I but I think it's very easy to paint the guy who's wearing a dra- a black dragon helmet and armor 
as like the bad guy that I, they, they tried. And, and I think, I think I'm, I'm kind of with you here. I think they really tried to paint him as the bad guy. Or they're just trying to paint him. Well, yes. And, and I also think maybe more, a little more arrogant and I don't know, but yeah, it's, yeah. See, you're, I, they're, see, they're trying and to I, I just, guy. I saw, in my opinion, I saw a very thoughtful character. He is, he is patient. He is thoughtful with his words. He, he, he is very calculated and, and that can be, that can be perceived. I feel like in a few different ways. And that's why I think Otto sees him as a threat to the throne. Cause I feel like we're going to learn that Otto Hightower is, I, I just strongly believe he's going to try to overthrow, uh, uh, but serious. So that's I'm like, I'm, I, I would bet my money on that. So you're so, and, and this goes further into the episode, uh, just a, a minute further into the episode where Otto tells uh, Viserys about him saying the line, the King for a day, he has Damon come into the throne room, which um, just has to be the most intimidating thing ever. A man with a sword sitting on a throne made of swords surrounded by, by more swords with multiple not, gold cloaks. But Damon's not intimidated by that. I think that's what we kind of get though. But I think it's, but that's the brother relationship I think is to him. Like he's not threatened by his brother. Cause he just, and I thought it was an important line. And it is another quick line where he go, where, where Viserys goes, did you say it? Like you're out, like, like my, my wife and child are, are dead. I have nothing. And you're out drinking at a whorehouse. And Damon goes, we, we mourn in our own ways, brother kind of thing. Um, and, and I feel like that was, that's impactful. Cause I think, I think that's also true for a lot of people. And, and in the scene that we got to see of him in that whorehouse, he is sitting, he is, he's doing he's kind not, of that he's calculated. Not participating he's not participating. Right. His men, he's letting his men participate. He's sitting there, you know, fully clothed and just not he's, he's he's doing the calculated thing he's thinking we don't know if it's like we don't know is he is he calculating his next move or is he general generally sad for his brother and and i think that's the that's the the fine balance because as soon as someone says like they're waiting for you to talk kind of thing he gets up and he speaks to his men and he kind of he kind of buys into them being thrilled it, so it's it's a very interesting balancing act that they were that they are doing with prince damon targaryen um gosh i think i i think i'm kind of with you i think Otto hightower is like these two together aren't safe because maybe and may, maybe we're wrong but maybe he thinks damon has too much pull on Viserys. Because because it's also mentioned that Viserys is a very easily swayed king. It is Viserys said, yeah, just have Damon beat the succession. It was the rest of the council or the, the round. T- or I forget what they call it. Off the top of my head. Um, but that they want like Viserys wanted him to be the succession. Everyone's like, oh, no, 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 no. We can't. Oh, no, no, oh, no, no. He can't lead. He's not good. Right. And this whole time we see that Damon's listening in on this. So like he's hearing what right. these people are right. saying. So which which. <laughs> I mean, keep going with the theme is that he's calculated like. Yeah. So this guy knows what's going on. Like, so that gosh, that makes it makes That's it so like, interesting. I just wish I could remember if he did say it and we saw that because it, it seems like something like that he wouldn't say. Right. For being as calculated as he is. Right. But he also seems like. Oh, you know, it, it that they, they, to find out who his enemies are, like who's going to out him. That could be it too, but he also seems like the man, the type of man that's he. He feels like he has this relationship with his brother that, like, if my brother really thinks, yeah, if my brother really thinks I would say something like that and he won't believe my word, then that is what it is. I'm too prideful to, I shouldn't have to defend myself, kind of thing. Like if I didn't say that, and I'm not going to defend myself for not saying it. So he's one. So they want him sent off to his wife in uh oh gosh the the high up tower i'm 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 blanking on the name of it but they want him 
almost as far as as far away as possible without going to the north. Basically, he's not going to the Starks, but he's going very, very close to the Starks. That's the the next furthest away area. Um, but I mean, he's been away anyway because he's been at the watch. So, so Mark, I I really expected in this scene because this is a, a very Game of Thrones thing, and we learned this early in the episode that he is in charge of the Gold Cloaks. I really thought that he was going to, and this is where I was kind of in that same mindset of like, Damon is the bad guy. I thought he was going to have his gold cloaks turn around and kill Viserys or like, or like, or maybe, maybe not kill him, but like show the power that Damon actually has by having that camaraderie with his men. Did you get that vibe at all? I didn't like. I didn't. I didn't think that was going to happen. Okay, well, we're not on the same uh, link then. I, yeah, I just thought. Not, I just thought. We're not. I thought it was interesting that they they made it a point to show all of that connection with the gold cloaks, um, and then to have four gold cloaks standing in front of the king. It was Dragonstone. He was sent to Dragonstone. Okay. I don't. I guess I'm not. So I feel. I feel like like Gosh, you got to have like a map of this whole area. To like kind of just figure out where well how far are they going? So he's so he is then sent away. Uh and that I believe that ends our episode, if I'm not mistaken. No, didn't we get Am I missing the something? whole Viserius deciding the choose? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Goodness gracious. Like, of I course. Think, I don't think it ended there. I think it <laughs> No no no. Yeah. <laughs> then so then we get to the council again. And they have to they have to make a decision on an heir, and and Lord Corlea, Cor, Corlea Valerian is like, Reneas Valerian has the strongest claim. Yeah, he to was throne. he was the first one to say it when they initially had that round table of, like discussion about it, and right. then you know doubles down. Yeah, and then Viserys has this his moment of clarity. He's like, Rhaenyra is most fit to be queen. And he, that, like, and he apologizes for not seeing yeah. it because they have that dialogue around the that drake and skull which yeah and then, then that i feel like that was an important dialogue too is what do you see when you see the dragon and she's like i see our family kind of thing and it's it, so 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 now we're 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 you know we're neck deep in the game of thrones this is Viserys is 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 a king who didn't want to be king, but wants to make sure that Targaryens stay on the throne. So he's putting Rhaenyra as the next in line to be on the throne, which paints a giant target on Rhaenyra's back. Exactly. Like this is going to be now houses are going to come out of the woodwork to either wed her. Right. Or kill her to get her out of success. Cause I think that that'll be the next. She's, she's the one who has a target on her back, not the king. So, so it'll be interesting to see who goes after her. Like, does is that where you know Damon has to come to her aid, or what's going to go on? So, so so we get yeah, we, it's very interesting. They did a lot of really really good things in this first episode. Uh, a lot of good story building, a lot of good character development. Uh, like I said, I gave it a five point nine out of six. Uh, great episode. I want. I have. I have a few more questions, um, and we kind of talked about this in our in our pregame. Do you think that we're ever going to see someone connected or or whether it's a family member or or like you had mentioned, like the sprites or whatever they're called yeah. or the Night King? Well, like, like, are we going to see a connection at all well, I know from we got, like, two Game Stark, of Thrones? I think we got like a Stark and Baratheon connection, which I mean, but then no, we got those are houses. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I guess. Yeah. So but it's. Yeah, because we talked about in the in the Patreon part of this episode. Um, yeah, like what what has what could still be alive? And yeah, I said the sprites or the three eyed raven, but I don't I don't really or like the Night King. I don't really think you're going to bring any of those people in. I would imagine you're not, because like how do they you know help move the story along at this point? But, because um, this is. So for people that may not may not know, this is set 200 years before Game of Thrones and 172 years before uh, Jamie Lannister kills the Mad King. 
So so it would be very difficult. There would have to be either a very old person or or something well, that would have to not, connect these two stories. And this is like they're they're just not going to do do connecting because it's like there's so much time even we in Game of Thrones where people don't believe in dragons because there's been so much time. So I'm sure sure for how long they do this season, it's going to or this series, they're going to end it with dragons being killed off. And then those three dragon yeah, eggs probably would be, think. being like shipped off that right. you know, Daenerys eventually gets. So, which is it's interesting for how how sustainable can this series be? You have 172 years, I suppose, to play with. I say you probably you could probably do the same amount of seasons. You, you probably could. That that book, the House of Dragon, book's huge. Do you so, think so? I think it would be very interesting. If if you do, you would do some time jumps here and there to make well, it they're, eight well, they're seasons. Doing it time jumps because they have two because actresses. they have the young tags on there. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be very interesting if by the end of all of this, all of this House of the Dragon, if it ends with Jamie Lannister killing the Mad King. See, now I was just thinking about that. It's like, do you do you just follow? But that'd be that'd be introducing a whole new line of characters where it's like. Do you just tell this block of story over like a 20 to 30 year period? And then eventually do you guys do they does HBO Max or HBO or Warner Brothers Discovery do a season or a series over like that era of time where the Mad King gets killed? Because I I would love that. I think that's what you do. I think I think that's how you do this. And I think you plan. I think you plan for like large time jumps where it's okay let's say and i don't know how any of this goes so let's say well, Rhaenyra I, I becomes that story would be a house of dragon storyline necessarily but it kind of would be but so like it'll sure. be interesting. but it, it all falls under the game of thrones tag i don't know if it would be house but it would be house of dragon because the mad right, king yeah. was a targaryen yes, he was so yes <clears throat> so so, I, I so you could say like let's say let's let's do two seasons where let's say it's Rhaenyra is the queen and then after two seasons you get you get like there's a good 20 or 40 year time jump where things are, you know, it's another peaceful time okay. kind of if thing. They're gonna the do thrones have settled. Like that, if yeah, thrones, there's no more game. It's just the thrones. Um, if you're going to do time jumps like that, you got to be spot on with your storytelling and how you and how you show it. Like that would be that's a pretty progressive way of doing things where you just do time. You basically recast everybody. Right. It would be an incredible way to connect to the Game of Thrones that we started with. And it would have, I think, and I said this before, I think it would have to end with Jamie Lannister killing the Mad King. Because that's how it, that's how everything started. Because so you just end, and like we would all know what the finale okay, would be. So what you're telling me is you're ending the House of Dragons, no matter if you get like seven seasons out of it. The seventh season... And you're doing these time jumps. The season, the last episode is those events, and it ends with Jamie killing the Mad King, and maybe exactly. you get a little bit of a little bit afterwards, like a little like ten minutes of what you know how everything kind of starts. You would okay. get where everyone goes and who's in who's in power, and that that would be about it. But you and then, and then you, in, you, in it, you rush it right goes back the, right into Game of Thrones. Game of know. Thrones. Yeah, that's where I was going. So so, and, and may, maybe you know that's you know that's putting the cart before the horse but i i'm i just imagine I, i'm already eventually out. connecting all of this and, and maybe you don't call it you know maybe it's not the house of the dragon maybe it's maybe every time they decide to do a time jump they name it something different because then you can remarket it and you know hbo or they want to well, make they money call they're gonna it game of thrones it. house of dragon you kind of right. do it so you like, could call um, it game of thrones house of what's that sh- i'm blinking on the show american horror story you just you know you have the main title and then that's you a great the, example yeah that's a great example of of bam, like new, um, new show um, right like it's or, it's, true, or true crime on hbo they've already done that there you go exactly there there are ways to do this where you can connect this entire story and well, i think it I, comes back to this you you either you have to execute on the story execute on the writing and execute on that you know who's who's in it the casting actors. yep yeah the, yep and like, you know, you can be you can bat 75 percent to, you know, kind of push you to the next season. 
But yeah, if you drop the ball in one of those seasons, it kind of going to end it. Right. And you and it would have to be fairly quickly like this would all have to connect within the next uh, Game of Thrones ran for it started in 2011 and ended in 2020. 2019. 2019. Ended, uh, if you remember, Infinity Bros podcast started a month before. It's, our first episode was the start of season eight, I believe. It was me and Max. I Max hates that episode. It was me and Max, uh, the first episode, 2019, of, of season eight. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're right. So it would have to be by... 2030 2031 that it would start connecting because because i think I, I mean i think a 20 year gap where game of thrones and basically the the mcu and game of thrones just battle it out for like most relevance i think that's i think that's doable but i don't think you can't stretch this out more than that you you have like the plan has to already like we're thinking of it on a podcast they have had to have that plan you know in 2020 like and they're like if we succeed here we can do this and this and this and this but then who knows what uh warner discovery is going to do because a show like this is already being pushed out because it was already done so it'll be up to them i mean we just heard you know some of that dc news where they only had enough money to do two movies the rest of the year. Oh, Mark, time. that's only that's a but, that's like, a should, that's a whole another that. pod. That's <laughs> yeah. a whole another podcast that we cannot get into on this the episode. Listeners have already been here enough. They we can't get into that on this episode, unfortunately. Uh, but gosh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of potential for these type of shows. The the last question I have, um, because it seemed like a focal point that we were supposed to like keep our eye on. Uh, it's Sir Criston Cole played by Fabian Frankel is the man who defeats Daemon Targaryen, um, yeah. in the jousting event. Um, do you, do, do you have any inkling, any, any, any thoughts on what his role might be moving forward? What was his last name again? Like what house was he part of? He, he Cole, he does. He's not oh, a part of any house. Cause oh, was, remember, was he- was he he's, the, he's the first the guy that form? goes. Yep. So he's yep. the first guy that goes and defeats. I believe it wasn't hot. It wasn't. It wasn't a uh, high tower. Uh, that was Damon that defeated the, the other high tower boy. But Cole, like he had to like, I think he had to win his way in kind of thing as a common born. Um, and he goes on to defeat the prince um, first in jousting and then in hand to hand combat. Um and then he gave, he you know asks the favor of Rhaenyra Targaryen. What do you think his role is? What do you, do you have? Do you have any thoughts on what he might be besides maybe just a love interest? I just like my mind goes right to like a Game of Thrones storyline where it's like yeah he's a love interest and then is like brutally murdered in front of her like type of situation. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it might be. No more than that. I was just actually in that scene. I'm just more surprised that Damon didn't like sneakily kill him. So I think that shows some compassion in Damon's part, which we're like, yeah, we're supposed to literally believe that he's the bad guy, but I think he's not going to be the bad guy. So maybe Damon, we'll have had, a team Damon up. had a chance. Yeah, that's. I just totally thought like back to the Game of Thrones storyline. Yep, he's going to like take his sword, cut his legs off, cut, you know, stab him in the face. But nope, didn't happen. So. And leading up to that, we had kind of thought that Damon would be that type of guy because it was just after he had done the whole gold cloak thing and murdered a bunch of people in the, well, in the he, streets. He, he he murdered criminals. Criminals. Because criminals aren't people. Potentially murdered already some people. Oh. He's trying to keep the streets clean and safe from murderers and thieves and rapers. So, I mean, did he really do something bad? I don't know. That's uh. That's well, up for what, do think, what do you think? What do you what? What do you fall on that line? Should you, should we should we cut off the hands of people who steal? I mean, what's it say in the Bible? That's <laughs> that's a valid point. It's a valid depends, point. Bible it depends on it. it depends on where you want to stand your moral beliefs behind. I guess. What's really. what's the uh what's the Bible? What is it? Uh, if my my left eye causes me to sin. Cut it out. Is that it? There. Is that your going is. with this? Yep, there it is. Live, okay. We should live in a world of sea and uh, and bird box. Here to hear from first, folks. 
There it is. All right. That's the <laughs> Infinity Bro podcast. podcast. Uh, <laughs> What a great episode. I'm really excited for for more House of the Dragon. I think there's a lot of story to be told here. Um, really invested in these characters. Um, be looking out for, for more reviews on Game of Thrones. Um, be looking out for more reviews on uh, She-Hulk, which we I believe we are recording tomorrow night. Some of you are recording tomorrow night. Some of you will probably get this on the weekend. Um Check us out wherever you find your podcast. We're also on TikTok, Instagram. Uh, we have Samsung podcast, apparently Apple, uh, Google, wherever you get your podcast, you can type in the Infinity Bros. Check us out there. Uh, check us on all the socials. Uh, Mark, thanks so much for joining me on my first venture as host. I was glad to be here. I'm sure the rest of the boys will be static hearing you lead the way. I, w- I would love for everyone to leave a review on uh, any of the podcast sites and don't review the episode review how I did as a host, make that, make that what your review is and give me uh, stars uh, depending on how you think I did uh, that determines if I get to feed my children next month. Um, and if Max will uh, uh, hug me uh, on Saturday, so please do that. Uh, I would love to get a hug from Max. I would love to, my, my kids would love to eat um, in the month of September. Um, it's been a long time since I've ate. So please, 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 please check us out on all the socials. Leave us a review. Let me know how we did. Um, and yeah, that we're going we're gonna to call it quits on, a, on another episode of the Infinity Bros podcast. All right. Love you 3000. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Infinity Bros Podcast. You can find the Infinity Bros on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Infinity Bros. Feel free to send listener feedback via email at infinitybrospodcast at gmail.com.